How's it going everyone? In this video I'm going to go through the basics of KineMaster so you can start editing videos on your phone straight away. KineMaster is one of the most popular and feature packed video editors on a smartphone. I'll show you how I made this intro and I'll also go through some of the more advanced features like keyframing and removing green screen backgrounds using the chroma key. All of these features are included in a free version of the app which is available on Android and iOS. I'll be using it on my iPhone but the main interface and functionality are similar across both platforms. This video is for anyone interested in filming and editing videos on their phone. Shout out to all the budding filmmakers out there. So let's get started. When you open up the app you will see this screen. The big circle with the plus sign is where you create new video projects and these will appear in the boxes to the right. The small circle on the left is the KineMaster Asset Store where you can get animations for your videos and the red circle on the right is a link to the official KineMaster YouTube channel. To get started with a new project, tap the plus sign then select an aspect ratio. Either landscape, portrait or square, you'll most likely use the landscape 16x9 option. Now this is the main editing interface. This control panel on the right allows you to add media, text, audio and graphics to your project. We'll go into more details on that shortly. The bottom section is your project timeline where you build the sequence from videos, audio and text. These are organized in layers one on top of the other. The preview window will show you the video you are working on with all the added elements on it. You have the action bar which contains settings to control your project and changes depending on what you have selected. So let's add our first clip. The red button in the middle of the option panel opens your camera so you can record a video or take a picture directly. If you already have the footage then tap the media button at the top. You can then import video clips or photos by tapping the tabs on the left. I'll choose a video and select a couple videos saved on my phone. You can however add as many as you want. These will appear in the top track of the timeline next to each other. Once selected, tap the check mark in the top right hand side to confirm the selection. If you tap and drag the timeline left and right you can move forward and backwards in time. The red line is called the playhead and shows the current frame in the main preview window. You can scrub forwards and backwards and the playhead will always stay in the middle. You can jump to the start or end of the video by tapping this arrow at the bottom left. It will change from pointing left to right and you can play the video by pressing the play button located on the right. The video will start playing at the point of the playhead. If you tap on the clip the border will turn yellow to show it's selected. Then by pressing and dragging the ends of the clips you can trim the clip to your desired length. Alternatively, you can see that the options panel has now changed when an item is selected. At the top you have a button for trim split. Selecting it reveals three options. Trim to the left of the playhead, this deletes everything on the selected clip to the left. Other clips won't be affected. Trim to the right of the playhead deletes everything to the right on that specific clip only. Split at playhead splits the clips so you would use this to take a portion of the video clip out either to move it or delete it. Once a clip is selected you can see a range of options for editing it. After trim and split you have pan and zoom which allows you to zoom in and pan across a video. Then you have the audio mixer. You can add filters. The stars mean they are premium features. You can adjust the speed. You can reverse the footage, rotate or mirror the clip add video effects, there are basic ones here, then you have fancy ones like BAM, modern title. I'll choose none for now. You can add a vignette to the footage, adjust the EQ, reverb and voice. There is also a volume envelope where you can create your own audio fades or make adjustments to volume during a clip. Going down you also have visual adjustments for brightness, contrast and saturation. Lastly the information button where you can also rename your clips. If you select a video on a secondary track you will get different options. You can split the screen, useful if you want to duplicate yourself on screen. 
you have animation controls in animation animates the start of the clip and out animation animates the end you can crop or reverse the clip the chroma key allows you to replace a particular color usually blue or green and add a new color for the background this is a powerful technique that we'll come back to shortly scrolling down you also have options for opacity filters audio and blending as you can see this app has plenty of features you can explore moving on if you tap and hold the clip once it snaps you can slide it to a new position and change the order of clips the two finger pinch motion will zoom in and out of the timeline this is useful if your timeline starts to get really long now let's go over to the main options control panel you now know you can import media with the top button you can also add music sounds and voiceovers with the audio button I will add a song now save to my phone again just tap audio tap the plus sign then press the check mark icon in the top right the audio will be added underneath the primary layer and it will start where the playhead is but you can adjust the position by tapping and dragging it anyway again you can trim the ends by tapping and dragging in the sides you can distinguish between the audio and video as thumbnails will be shown for video clips and waveforms will be shown for audio clips in the timeline. The record button allows you to record a voiceover that will be added to a new layer once you've finished. You can delete any clips by selecting it and hitting the trash can in the action bar. <laughs> Lastly, the layers button. As the name suggests, it lets you add various effects to new layers on your project. The media button allows you to add a clip to a new layer underneath the main track. Effect allows you to add basic effects like blur and mosaic. Text will obviously add text. Let's add some text now while we're here. As you can see, once the clip is selected, the panel changes to reveal new options again. Here I can change the font. Let me choose a nice one. Now we can tap the check mark to save it. Let's see what that looks like. That looks good, but I'm going to move it to the start of the video and add a fade in. To do that, we can tap the text, then tap in animation and select fade. I'm also going to fade it out with the out animation. OK, I think that looks pretty good to me. With the stock footage, it looks quite professional. I'll also add another text layer with my channel name. I'll just line it up to where the beat changes and add a different animation. You'll see a red dot appears next to an option that is applied so you can quickly see which ones are selected. If you want to delete it, you can go back into the option and select none at the top of the list. Also in the layer options, you can find overlays when there are loads to choose from. You can adjust the size and rotation of these with these two buttons and drag it across the screen to move location. I don't need uh, any overlay so I'll just tap the trash can button on the left to delete it. Make sure the item is selected before deleting otherwise you might delete the wrong one. Lastly in the layers panel you have handwriting so you can draw directly on the video. The tabs at the top allow you to adjust the settings for the pen tool and access the animation menu for it as well. Again I don't need it so I'll just delete it. Now this trash can above the control panel is for the watermark. You can only delete it if you have the paid version of the app. So all free videos you export will have this watermark applied. It's a small price to pay for such a feature packed application. Now let's take a look at the action bar on the left. If nothing in the timeline is selected, you will see these tabs. The top button takes you back to your list of projects. On Android, this button may appear on the top right. Then you have undo and redo. You use these quite often. The next icon lets you take a screen capture. The gear icon takes you to the project settings. Here you can adjust the audio settings for the volume and audio fade in and out, the video fade in and out and thirdly the editing options. This adjusts the duration of clips and layers you add to the timeline. This button makes the timeline full screen. This is useful if you have many layers. Tap the button again to go back to normal. Finally, as mentioned earlier, the bottom button brings the playhead to the beginning or end of your project. You might use this quite often as it saves you from having to click and drag to the start. Righty, so if you select an item on the secondary layer, the action bar will change. 
you will now see three dots in the top where you can duplicate an element or center it horizontally or vertically. If you have multiple layers underneath the main track, you will see options to bring it forward or backwards in the list. A new button with a key will also appear. This is for key framing. We'll go into that in a second. At the bottom, you now have the pin tool. If you select the pin tool, this will stick an item on the secondary track to a specific time. Normally the item will stick directly to the clip in the primary track. This pin tool anchors the item to a set time. Now let's look at keyframes. Keyframes let you animate items on your layers. You can change the size, position or rotation of items. So what I'm going to do is animate this text. Once selected, tap the keyframe button in the action bar. The position you see the text now is the start position. Then we want to move it to an end position, change the text and add a keyframe to save the new position by pressing the plus sign. This time it added it automatically. Tap the check mark in the top to save it and let's see what that looks like. I'll scroll back to the start of the animation and press play. Okay, that seems to have worked. Using the left and right arrows here, you can switch between the keyframes to see the positions. The minus sign button deletes a keyframe. You can, of course, add as many keyframes as you want for full on animation. I can make the text move around the screen with multiple keyframes. It's basically stop motion animation, but digitally. You move an object, record the position, move it again, record it with a keyframe and so on. That's the basics. I'm sure you can come up with more creative animations than me. Another effect you might want to add to your project is transitions. Transitions connect one shot to another. I'll just quickly cut the clip here to the beat of the music and add a transition. You can add transitions by clicking the plus sign between two clips. There are loads to choose from. Cuts and fades are the ones you'll most likely use. You can find some of these in the classic transitions section. If you want to make it a bit more dynamic, you can choose a more complicated one like this pixel swipe. This one actually looks quite good with the building coming out of the ground and the lights. Um, doesn't quite go with the beat, but just for demonstration purposes, I'll leave it here. The last feature we'll look at today is the chroma key. The chroma key allows you to replace the color and remove backgrounds from videos or pictures and place it on top of a different background. You will need two layers for this, the background layer in the primary track and the main subject in the secondary track underneath it. You will need footage with a solid background, ideally in green or blue, but any color works. I have some stock green screen footage from Pexels that I can add. You can then adjust the clip in position and when it is selected, tap the chroma key option on the right. Tap enable and it should detect and remove the green screen background straight away. And there you go, that's it, quick and easy. 10 years ago, you couldn't do this on your smartphone. Technology has certainly come a long way. If it's not quite right, you can make adjustments by moving these two buttons. You can also select a different key color here, adjust the detail curve and show mask. Show mask reveals what will be removed. If it's pure black, it will be completely transparent and pure white, it will be completely solid. If it's gray, it will be partially visible. In the ideal situation, you want a completely black and white image in the show mask. In this case, it has detected it straight away. However, you can make changes. The top button is the foreground slider, which you want totally white. The bottom button is the background slider, which you want totally black. The detail curve refines the blending between the foreground and background. So if you have a little bit of green around the edges, you can refine the edges to remove that. So finally to export, tap the export button located in the top right, select a resolution and frame rate, adjust the quality and export. The good thing about this is that you can see how big the file is before you export it. A pop up will appear asking if you want to upgrade to premium, just tap skip if you don't want to. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe if you found that useful. I would love to know what kind of videos you guys are making with Kinemaster. Let me know in the comments and I'll check them out. 
don't forget to hit the notification bell as well. If you want me to create any other tutorials on KineMaster or other video editing apps, let me know. Otherwise, good luck with your projects and I'll see you in the next one.